us at Eternal Food Ministry, where we share the bread of life. We not only preach the gospel, but we help those who are in need of food assistance. We help people in emergency food needs from loss of job, death in the family, sickness, in between jobs, delayed paychecks, and other unforeseen circumstances. This is because we believe in providing for the physical to touch the inner hunger. Now, let's join Josephine Zion for the spiritual food on the Bread Broadcast. God bless you. Praise God, praise God. And let the people of God say, Amen, Amen. I welcome you to the Bread Broadcast. To God alone be the glory who daily loads us with benefits. Thank you for joining me this week and thank you for visiting eternalfood.tv. If you have not, you are missing out, all right? I've, I've watched so many movies from that channel. I'm telling you, they are a blessing. And um, share, share a link with your friends, with your loved ones and co-workers uh we need to grow we need to grow people and uh we just need to insulate ourselves with the word of god okay today we are going to be talking about spiritual appetizers uh it's going to be a two-part series so we're gonna do one part this week and the second part concluding part uh, will be next week if the Lord tarries and um, the case study is going to be believers Christians pastors preachers uh, parishioners you know it doesn't matter by what title you go by Christians believers but before we dive into this topic let us pray father we thank you oh Lord you are so faithful and we appreciate you Father, you have brought us here to hear what the word of God has for us. Holy Spirit, let our spiritual ears become unblocked. And Lord, let our heart receive your word. Let it mix with faith in us. So that you'll be able to do what you're planning to do in our lives. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. All right. Our foundation text is going to be John chapter 1, verse 19. We stop at 23. Gospel of St. John, chapter 1, verse 19 to 23. And I read. Now, this is the testimony of John. This is John the Baptist. When the Jews sent priests and Levites from Jerusalem to ask him, Who are you? They asked him, John, now. He confessed, that is John, and did not deny, but confessed, quote, I am not the Christ, end of quote. And they asked him, quote, What then? Are you Elijah? He said, this is John the Baptist, I am not. Are you the prophet? And he answered, no. Then they said to him, who are you that we may give an answer to those who sent us? What do you say about yourself? And this is John's response. He said, I am, quote, the voice of one crying in the wilderness, make straight the way of the Lord, as the prophet Isaiah said. So that was John the Baptist quoting the prophet Isaiah. What is an appetizer? An appetizer is a small dish of food or drink that you take before the main course, before the main meal. 
Uh, it goes by so many names. Antipastor, Hajjava, Stara, you see. What then are spiritual appetizers? Watch this. Spiritual appetizers are preambles, a preface, a prologues, if you will, to Jesus Christ. Spiritual appetizers, please listen carefully, are not prerequisites to Jesus Christ. Big difference from a preamble and a prerequisite. Big difference. Okay? But I will explain as we go along. Examples of spiritual appetizers. Signs and wonders. When God allows you to experience miracles in your life, you don't have to be a Christian to experience miracles. Oh no. I've, I've listened to many people who before they were Christians, before they became Christians, that God allowed them to experience some supernatural power of God in their lives, you see. Or they see it in other people's lives. A car wreck that should have taken your life, God said no, he stepped in. A sickness that could have put you six feet under, God said no. Those are miracles, you see. And these are spiritual appetizers, like food that you eat before the main course. Testimonies. When you listen to how God has moved in the lives of other people, prayers answered, those are appetizers, spiritual appetizers. But they're not prerequisites. No. Preachers, like you are listening to Josephine Zion, I'm a spiritual appetizer. I'm not a prerequisite, you see. I am pointing you to Jesus Christ. But you don't have to have me before you have Jesus, you see. I'm a preamble. I point you to Jesus. Or maybe you stumble on Christian CDs or DVDs, a song, a Christian song, a movie. God has used Christian movies for me in various times, in the past, and he's still using them for me, you see. And it affects, it has impact in, uh, in your life. And all those things of a, 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 a spiritual book, a, a Christian book, I mean to say. And God uses that to speak to your heart, you see. And they, they present the word of God in a clear form that touches your heart and tells you the truth about your spiritual condition, all those are your spiritual appetizers pointing you to Jesus. Lifestyle witnessing. You know of a Christian neighbor. You know of a family that is a Christian in your neighborhood. There is a Christian family in your neighborhood. They don't fight like your other neighbor. They are not crazy like your other neighbor. That's your spiritual appetizer right there. God placed them in your neighborhood to point you to Jesus Christ. All these are like John the Baptist who said, listen, I am not Jesus, but I am here to point you to Jesus. I am a spiritual appetizer. All right. Now, what can appetizers do? Appetizers. By design, they come in very small portion, little portion, okay? And usually they are made up of one group, one group of food, you see? So it's not meant to be your main meal. An appetizer is just to stimulate your body, your tummy, to prepare your body for the main meal that will come. So are uh, spiritual appetizers. Just as appetizers increase your yearning to eat, the church pulpit, now this is the pulpit. I'm standing in the, I'm sitting in the pulpit, preaching, giving the word of God out. So this is meant to be an appetizer. 
to invigorate and energize you as a believer listening to want to know Jesus more. You see, the Bible says God has given to the church apostles, prophets, evangelists, pastors, and teachers, you see. And God has gifted, has given these offices to the body to mature the body of Christ. So God released the gift to understand his word to some people. And they, 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 the Holy Spirit will just take them down deep. Something that another person cannot understand easily. And the Holy Spirit will give them the ability to pass that understanding across in simple ways that they can comprehend. So they also can go grab their Bible and study the Word of God with the understanding with which they have been imparted. That is the gift of teaching that God has given me, you see. So my job is to invigorate you, to energize you, to want to know Jesus more, to want to study his word more. Now, this in turn, the gift of teaching and preaching that God has given me should now in turn make you the listener or the viewer of church people to go out, you see, and do the same for your unbelieving co-workers, relatives, friends, and neighbors. That's the whole point. To do anything less is to live less than Jesus intended for us, both you and I. If the Holy Spirit, or when, not if, when the Holy Spirit opens my eyes, to see some hidden manners in the word of God and gives me explanation, illustrations about it and he helps me to understand it and he now says, now go out and teach other people. If I fail to do that, guess what? I'm fairly already in what he has called me to do, which is to teach his word. I'm failing already unless I repent. Now, when I pass that across, that means I'm being faithful. Now, if you as a believer, you finish listening to this program and other genuine uh, preachers that you listen to, and you fail to put into practice what you have learned, you fail to study the word of God, to know Jesus more, you know, in your own language, and then go out to do what Jesus has said, you are living below your divine standard already. You see? But that can change. You see? In John chapter 1, verse 40, which if we read up to 47, it's a long read, so we're not going to do that, but you can do that at home. Andrew brought Simon, who later became Peter, Simon Peter, to Jesus. You see? Andrew became the appetizer for his brother, Simon Peter. Philip brought Nathaniel to Jesus. He acted as an appetizer. Let's go to the book of Acts, chapter 3, verse 12. This was a very good case of a miracle being used by God as an appetizer at the same time as uh, preaching. This happened when Peter and John went to pray, uh, pray in the temple. And there's a gate called Beautiful. And there was a lame man there. And he was looking to get some money from Peter and John. They said, listen, we don't have money. But what we have, we give to you. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, arise and walk. And the man was healed. Now, this was Peter's response. When all of them were like, whoa. So when Peter saw it, he responded to the people, men of Israel, why do you marvel at this? Or why look so intently at us? As though by our own power or godliness, 
We had made this man walk. You see, if we had read the following verse, there he pointed them to Jesus. The same thing happened in the book of Acts, chapter 14, verse 15, when Paul and Barnabas were at Lystra. God also used them to heal another cripple. And this was their response when the people of the uh, city of Lystra, they brought a bull and wanted to sacrifice to Paul and Barnabas because they said, the gods have come down to us. They call uh, Barnabas Zeus and they call Paul Hermes. And Paul said, friends, why are you doing this? We are merely human beings, just like you. We have come to bring you, watch this, the good news that you should turn from these worthless things and turn to the living God who made heaven and earth, the sea and everything in them. You see, Paul quickly stated their mission. Listen, don't worship us. We have brought the good news of Jesus to you. Him you will worship, not us. That's spiritual appetizer. A pointer is a leader. Let me say that again. A pointer is a leader. So to point others to Jesus is to lead others to Jesus. You are a leader. What? The, yes, you are a leader. Maybe you don't believe you're a leader. Maybe you've been put down all your life. But listen, listen up now. You are a leader. So you need to point people to Jesus. Amen. Moving on. Who can be a spiritual appetizer? Watch this. Everyone, boy, girl, Man, woman, it doesn't matter. Black, white, yellow, or purple, it does not matter. Everyone who has confessed Jesus as Lord and they daily live under the Lordship of Jesus through the guardianship of the Holy Spirit is a spiritual appetizer. You are a spiritual appetizer as much as I am. I'm telling you. In your office, where you work, you're a spiritual appetizer. In the hospital where you work, you're a spiritual appetizer. In the jailhouse where you work, you're a spiritual appetizer. In the school where you teach, you're a spiritual appetizer. In the courtroom where you represent clients, you are a spiritual appetizer. A plumber, a painter, a carpenter, it doesn't matter. You are a spiritual appetizer. Another word that Jesus used for appetizers is, are you ready? Witnesses. Hello, witnesses. Let's go to the book of Mark, chapter 16. We start from 15 and stop at verse 18. Mark 16, 15 to 18. And he said to them, this is Jesus speaking now, go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. He who believes and is baptized will be saved, but he who does not believe will be condemned. And these signs will follow those who believe. In my name, in Jesus' name, they will cast out demons, they will speak with new tongues, they will take up serpents, and if they drink anything deadly, it will by no means hurt them. They will lay hands on the sick and they will recover. You see, Jesus has given us his power of attorney. What I'm doing right here, I am doing in his name and in his authority. You also have the same power. There's only one Holy Spirit. We don't have two. Okay, if you are a sanctified, born again child of God, Holy Spirit filled, you have the same authority, the power of attorney, to go to your workplace and be the appetizer that will attract people to Jesus, that we want them to want your Jesus. 
the Jesus of the Bible. To be available is to be useful. Please listen to this carefully. To be useful is to be faithful. And to be faithful is to be fruitful. Let me say that again. We need to hear this in the church and get out of those church pews and get into the workplace to do what the Lord has called us to do. To be available is to be useful. To be useful is to be faithful. And to be faithful is to be fruitful. Are you available for God? Huh? When God gives you the opportunity, are you available? So, what have we done so far? I told you, this is a two-part, right? What is a spiritual appetizer? A spiritual appetizer is something or someone that God uses to point others, unbelievers, to himself. Not to ourselves, no. To himself. And that's the only thing that an appetizer is designed to do, really. That's the only thing that an appetizer can do. Who can be a spiritual appetizer? Every genuine Christian is an appetizer and must be an appetizer if you have not been playing that role. So, have you been bringing people to Christ? Huh? Or you just keep receiving spiritual food? You like the way Josephine Zion gives it out the old time way? Praise God for that. We don't have time to pamper people. We like to bear the word of God on this program. Praise God for that. But after you listen, what do you do with it? Huh? Do you just sit on it? Or you go out and witness to others. If you have not been doing that, get up! Get up! And bring others to Christ. People die daily. They are going to hell without Jesus. If you don't have the, 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 the sorrow, the sadness that God feels for unbelievers who go to hell every day because they didn't know Jesus, Pray to God. I did. Pray to God to give you that burden for those who don't know Jesus. And you will see how God will turn your life around to pursue people to want to tell them about Jesus Christ. Get up and bring others to Christ. It's the Lord's command. Be useful. Are you a believer but you are not sure if you have the Holy Spirit because you don't speak in tongues and you cannot heal the sick. I mean, I've spoken to so many children of God, believers, but they, they are in doubt because they don't speak in tongues. Listen now, listen now. It's a gift. It's a gift of the Holy Spirit. Okay? The power to heal in Jesus' name, to do miracles, is a gift. God may not give you that gift. That doesn't make you less of a believer. Oh, no. But one thing is very clear. If you are a genuine Christian, every believer who is a true child of God have the spiritual enablement to live differently from the world. Your lifestyle will be different from your neighbors and your relatives who do not know Jesus. Oh, yeah. How is that possible? That is your physical sign. That the Holy Spirit is inside of you. That is how you know. Now, having known that you have the enablement of the Holy Spirit to live a sanctified life among your unbelieving neighbors and friends and relatives, now go out in that confidence and begin to let them know about Jesus. Do you tell people about Jesus? But you have not seen one single soul come to salvation. Don't be discouraged. Oh no, don't. You have not failed. Oh no. Because God is not going to reward you on the souls that God converted or primarily on the souls that God converted. No. You don't have the power to convert people. Oh no. 
but you will be rewarded on your faithfulness. What is that? Each time God gives you the opportunity, maybe somebody was whining around you in your office, they crying that their life is messed up. That's an opportunity for you to point them to Jesus. You see, somebody is sick. Oh, let me pray for you. That's an opportunity for them or for you to let them know Jesus. Now, the more you do that, you are accruing rewards in heaven for your faithfulness. Of course, God will reward you somewhere. If somewhere down the road, somebody gets saved, of course. But you have not failed if you have not seen a soul come to Jesus. Keep speaking because God is faithful. One day, one day, he's going to bring a, a result of fruitfulness on your efforts. So keep working, keep preaching. Now, if you are an unbeliever, listen. But you have met some true Christians, you can say that my neighbor, she's a true child of God. She's different, she's not as crazy as I am. That's God using them for you as an appetizer. Now, if you squander that opportunity, or God in his mercy has helped you in the past and you are like, this is a miracle. And you know yourself that this is a miracle. If you squander that opportunity and God forbid you die without Jesus, guess what? Those witnesses of Jesus Christ, your neighbor whom you know as a child of God, the miracle that God gave you even though you didn't know the name of Jesus and you didn't believe in him, those will be the witnesses that, that, that will come against you. I'm telling you. Those will be God's witnesses against you if you fail to surrender yourself to Jesus. God will use those witnesses to remove your excuses why you didn't give your life to Jesus. He will. You say, oh no, nothing is going to happen to me now. Really? Really? How did you know? Huh? How did you know? Let me give you some statistics. I came across this and I'm like, whoa. You see, 55.3 million people die each year. 151,600 die every day. 6,316 people die every hour. Listen, 105 People die every minute. I've been on this program for more than 20 minutes. If my clock is right. Nearly two people die each second. Can you now multiply how many people have died since I started preaching to you? Huh? So don't say, oh no, I'm still young. You don't know. I was exchanging a text with a sister of mine yesterday and an in-law of ours that we talked about like three or four weeks ago, she was telling me yesterday, I'd already died and buried. And I was like, wait a minute, who, who? And she told me, X, Y, Z. What? The individual already died and buried within three or four weeks of not talking to each other. Can you see? So don't think, oh no, that, uh -uh, I got it fixed. You, you don't have anything fixed. So today is the day of salvation. God will judge you. And you will forever be damned if you die without Jesus. But God doesn't benefit anything from you going to hell. What, what is he going to benefit God? Nothing. And that is why he sent his son to die for you. Now, if you are ready to know his son, Jesus Christ, so you can be moved from death to life, from the danger of eternal hell to assurance of eternal heaven, wait, let me finish praying. And after the prayer, click on the link that will come up on the screen, and that will take you to where you will sort yourself out with Jesus. Because you need to search yourself out. If you are a non-believer, your life is in danger. Let us pray. Father, we thank you. 
Oh Lord, we pray for all the people in our sphere of influence who are yet to know Jesus. That you will open their eyes to the realities of hell. And Father, we pray for ourselves as believers that you will open our eyes to the realities of the punishment that await those who do not know you. Pull us out of our spiritual selfishness, O oh Lord, that we may go out and point people to Jesus and be the spiritual appetizers you have called us to be. In Jesus' name, I will pray. Amen. Amen. Listen, we finish this next week. I will see you next week if Jesus has not split the sky open.